In this video, we'll walk you through installing the CabinetSense environment into SketchUp, testing to make sure everything is hooked up correctly, and running our first export. To get the CabinetSense program, go to the CabinetSense website at www.cabinetsensesoftware.com and go to the download section. Based on the version of SketchUp that you'll be using, head over to the right section. There'll be three parts. There's a written installation guide. The Cabinet Sense program, we'll download that now. As well as a library of components, machining database, templates, and other items that you'll need when you're running Cabinet Sense. Let's open the folder where we downloaded the data. The library comes in a zip format, and it's up to you to decide where you would like to keep this information. You can keep it in the cloud, such as a Google Drive, a Dropbox account, or perhaps Microsoft OneDrive. The benefit of doing that is that your data will be available no matter which machine you log into, as it'll be on your cloud drive. Let's go ahead and just extract to our demo folder. Inside the library, you'll find the cabinet sense components, a database, handles, profiles, and templates. Now that we've got it extracted, we can go back into SketchUp and install the program. We'll head over to the extension manager and click on the install extension button. Again, Navigating back to where we downloaded our data, click on the RBZ file, which is the Cabinet Sense program. Accept the end user agreement, and Cabinet Sense will now install. We won't need the profiles at this moment, so we'll close that. Let's sign into Cabinet Sense. CabinetSense uses Gmail to validate your account. If you don't have a Gmail account, you can go ahead and create one. In this case, I'll use my existing account. If you haven't signed up for Cabinet Sense yet, you'll be presented with an account setup screen. In order to get your two week trial, fill in the form. Click on Create My Account. Okay, Cabinet Sense is set up and we're ready to go. When you sign up for a trial, you have the ability to export a cut list, fill the materials, door and drawer front reports, and drawer box reports. You do not have the ability to export machining data. We'll come back to this screen when we're ready to export a model. Okay, let's head over and install our components. In SketchUp 2017, they have the notion of trays. And if your SketchUp environment is still the way that it comes off of a, a basic install, you'll find the components browser is inside the default tray. So let's go ahead and show that tray. Let's open the components and add in cabinet sense. Click on the right hand arrow and select open or create local collection. Heading back to where we downloaded our library, highlight cabinet sense components and click select folder. We now have the components inside the SketchUp browser. One last thing that you'll want to do is add to favorites. 
what this does is add the Cabinet Sense components into the favorite section of the browser. And so if you ever lose uh, where you've kept it, you can always go back to the favorite section and call it up. Let's go ahead and add in our machining database. This is where we tell Cabinet Sense where our machining data is located. Simply click OK and heading back to our library again. This time, click on the database folder and select the database. We've now linked in the database and we're ready to try it. Let's select a cabinet. We'll go into X-ray mode and click on the Cabinet Sands Preview Drilling. This will show you where all the machining drill points will be when you export to the CNC. You can see our joinery holes, our shelf bin holes, our drawer box slide locating holes, and uh, hinge clip holes, etc. And the more components that you add, the more drill points will most likely show up in your cabinet. So one of the things that you'll want to do is, is to edit the cabinet and change the characteristics. And to do that, you'll want to bring in the SketchUp Dynamic Components toolbar. I'll right click in the gray area and select Dynamic Components. The component options is the window that you'll use when you want to change the data. So you can change the width and click apply. You can also edit the subparts of the cabinet. If you simply right click on the cabinet, select edit component, you'll see the dotted lines around the cabinet. You're now inside the cabinet, and you, when you click on a part, you can change the characteristics of it. Let's go ahead and export this cabinet and look at the results. Going back to the Cabinet Sense dashboard, We can select the parts that we want exported, and I'll choose all of them. And now the destination folder is where you're going to tell Cabinet Sense where to put your exported data. If you leave the destination folder empty, Cabinet Sense will write the data back into the folder where you saved your model. In this case, we haven't saved a model yet, it's a new one. Um, so we could save it and go ahead and run this. Or you can tell Cabinet Sense where you want all of your export data to be uh, written to. And what I'll do is create an export folder right off of my C drive. I'll click Save Settings and go ahead and run it. Let's go ahead and navigate over to the export folder. Each time that Cabinet Sense exports, it creates a folder. And inside of there will be all of your exported data. If you save your model, it'll have your model name plus a number. And the number is actually a timestamp. So Cabinet Sense will never overwrite an export. It will always create another folder with all of the new exported data inside of it. If we open up this folder, You'll find your bill of materials, the cut list file, the drawer report, and the door and uh, drawer front sizing report. Let's go ahead and look at cut list plus. We'll click on import parts, navigate to our exported folder, and click the cut list plus file. In the layout section will be your optimized sheet data.
And that's as easy as it is to export your data from CabinetSense.